check out the check out the resurrect. All right, all right. I like this. I also let's see. I have this written down. Let's see. Scroll up a little bit. My my notes thing. But I wanted to watch. Was it Justified? Yeah. Yes, that was the one we were talking about last week. That's on my list too. I have not watched that, even though every time I see something about it, I'm like, I should watch that. <laughs> that is on the short list for sure. Wow, already hitting me with the raid. Thanks, Nebo. So it looks I'm like nice. you're ne <laughs> you're the best. Uh, it looks like we will not have a sea swab with us today as we have lost him to Ragnaros's toes. So, mm -hmm. uh, we will put the bird back in the box because also I was kind of sweating over how you guys were going to deal with the fact that he doesn't have dark vision and you guys are underwater and he can't light a torch. And I just looked at his spell list. I'm like, this bird didn't take light. Nope. I did have a solution for that, but like, I'm glad I don't have to rely on it. Okay. <laughs> so I appreciate that. It's dark in here. He got uh, like, everybody got too used to Azrael, just giving them free dark vision. Maybe if he would oh. just fucking convert, maybe he could get dark vision as part of his deal. I don't know. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. um, we could have also inscribed on like a pair of goggles with the spell dark vision. It's a second level spell. Okay, Wang Doodle, I'm oh, yeah. trying. I don't <laughs> recruit a lot. I really don't recruit a lot. I need you to not. I need you to not. No, no. Fuck this... up my recruitment efforts. All right. No, no, no. This, Listen, no, we pitch them the shit out of it. All right. We don't tell them that it's actually been infused with a spell that's only going to work ten times. Instead, we go. These are an offering from Asriel. Get these now. For nineteen ninety nine <laughs> each, there's like six payments to this ongoing. Unless you forget, then it's forever. But still, get these and get imbued with Asriel's power. <laughs> After the tenth use, right? It doesn't work. They're like, oh no, what happened? Guess you haven't been appeasing Asriel lately. Maybe you should go to the deluxe acolyte package. Oh, oh, oh! But can I pay with in monthly installments with Klarna? <laughs> Oh my god. You can. Well, Asriel doesn't know you, Wang Doodle, but pursuant to Christine and I's previous conversation before you all hopped on, this this is fine. This this tracks plenty of room for uh, random grifters and, and cult leaders <laughs> on the train of Asriel. There's so much interpretation here. Listen, we got we got persuasion. We got persuasion. We've got stuff we can build. It's not hard to make sparklies. Sparklies get attention. We we, we can do <laughs> something here. All right. You want to make the first mega church of Arctis? We can do it. This guy's, this guy's gonna put cannons on this church. <laughs> you all keep saying this name, but I've never heard this person in my life. <laughs> I met him very briefly once. Azriel <laughs> yeah, went. Azriel went. Bye bye. Azriel <clears throat> mm -hmm. has a different duty now. And that's to provide Grabella with glorious amounts of rage as Grabella has shifted to the path of the Zealot in mm -hmm. Azrael's name. All right, everybody. Oslo to finally bend the knee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bow the head, not bend the knee. Bow the head. Bow the head. Why not both? Accept the trade. <laughs> Do the business. The bargain. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you just doing business? Speaking of bargains, we've got a lich to uh, slay. Find? Find and slay. Let's get to it. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to another glorious week of Arctis. Hello. Uh, I feel like last week went by way too quick. I feel like we had our last session like three days ago. It's good to have everybody back. Uh, let's do a round of, hey, how was your week? Uh, and I'm going to start with Wang Doodle today. Hey, how's your week? Oh, week's going, you know, as you would expect work-wise. Um, but now I get to 
relearn all of my muscle memory for games because I decided to buy one of these Azeron cyborgs and try it out. Uh, you bought a what? You bought a who? What? You bought a cyborg? You can I bought do a that? cyborg. <laughs> well, I mean, it's technically just like for a hand, but yeah, it's um, it's a whole. Th- I'll I'll link it to you, but basically, it's designed to be like um, like a gamepad or an MMO thing, so you can do control with a joystick, which I'm actually using right now. Oh. <laughs> um. So it's got a joystick. It's got all the different buttons you can map. So it's supposed to take your hand off the keyboard and allow you to move and manipulate a little bit better. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Was that that thing where it like has the bit that goes like up above your hand? Also, you're like hitting things with the top of your fingers and shit. Indeed. What? I've seen that before and was very curious because I like for MMOs I've used a um, like Nostromo or Weaver, whatever it's called they have different versions of it but i've used one of those for a long time yeah it's but once i get through the you know retraining the muscle memory it'll go a little bit better um yeah granted i'm also doing the trial through final fantasy 14 and not deciding hey let me remap everything and then see if i can still play shadow priest yeah no i'm not i'm not gonna hate myself like that you're gonna hate yourself like that (laughs) eventually just not right now (laughs) That's a problem for future Wang Doodle. Future Wang Doodle has been at war with me ever since I decided to start making things his problem. <laughs> Have you uh, been forced to raid lead as Wang Doodle yet? Have your minions forced you? Uh, there have been a couple bosses. Um, there's been some roulettes in 14 where Wang Doodle's been out there communicating. Um, I'm starting <laughs> starting to recognize that he is slightly more popular than, you know, just regular regular Chody, but it, it's fine, it's fine, we go with it. <laughs> when your OC finally eclipses your mortal form, excellent, you have ascended. Now Yay, you're a real you're I a real it. VTuber. She said the thing, we win, campaign over. <laughs> I'm anxiously awaiting just the debut of Wang Doodle the VTuber. But please give him huge badonka dogs. I mean, there's no other way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, Wang Doodle gotta, the stacked kobold. And gotta have that thick tail. We're talking like four <laughs> C's thick. Oh god, the, the fan art that is spawning in my head is all cursed. It's all just so cursed right now. I'll send you sketches. Yeah, we can hash something out. We, we can start <laughs> working on that. Uh, speaking of things that are thick with two C's, uh, Coslo, how are you doing? Am I thick with two C's? I t- I yes. T- I got that ass! Goblin with a fat ass! I'm excited. We need at some point still. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm excited. Somebody, a uh, friend of ours, Print it out and paint in Coslo, so he'll be on his way soon. Oh. Oh my god. We're gonna have a little mini of Coslo in the house. We're gonna have an actual collectible. Does he come with like a little stick of dynamite or perhaps a bomb? Have I did I not post the picture of him in here? I I have not even seen this. (laughs) Yes, you did. You helped me fix it because I asked you questions about it's the Hero Forge one. Right, but I haven't seen. Oh, I thought I thought you meant like you had the actual printed out thing. Uh, I de- I definitely need to see the little right. the Hero Forge Coslo. Yes, uh, I scale here Max. Forge. I width Max. Oh, he's just all eyeballs. There you go. <laughs> it's in the. I posted it in game updates. Like, oh, a that's dog, fine. But... Oh, <laughs> oh wow, that is that's it's so great. Good, right? Holy yeah. crap, hang on. That is just the best thing I've ever seen. I gotta put that on screen. Hang on. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> open, open this in a browser. Because I I, I, I wanted to get Devin this for his birthday, and then, like, the sale ended right when I was, like, so I was not able to get it. But I bought the SDL file recently, and we have a friend that likes to print and paint minis and sculptures and stuff. So he's like, yeah, give it to me. I'll, I'll, I'll do the thing. So he's hanging on to Coslo right now. Okay, I gotta 
We will we'll receive Kozlo eventually once I decide what I want him to make of me, <laughs> which is. I want to see the Grabella time. for sure. Yeah, well, and uh, he's been doing some of our covenant characters. Oh, so I have to like think about that. That's a lot of brain power. <laughs> okay, I put the Kozlo on screen. Oh my god, look at this! But I, I, I showed it to Devo because I was like, okay, I need <laughs> you to tell me if the eyes are too ridiculous or perfect. Or... I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, that's both of those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, but. It is printed and painted. Um, I just have to decide which mini he's gonna make for me, and then we'll have um, we'll have a Kozlo in a something. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Please, please do Grabella. That is on the list of options. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll hide the jump scare Kozlo now. That is so good. Boo! <laughs> Ah, scared me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rain, how was your week? Uh, it was pretty good. I mean, played a bunch of wizardry. Yeah, yeah. Spent several hours last night uh, recovering my party in wizardry. Yes. So for <laughs> the, the the classic gamers in here, I've also been playing wizardry because they apparently took the original Apple IIe game and remade it in 3D. And they also, like, overlay the Apple IIe version so you can see, like, both versions at the same time. It's honestly fantastic, and it is just as brutal as all games were back then. Because uh, if you lose your party in the dungeon, you gotta go in and get them. If you lose them on a real deep floor, you go in with your level ones, and those guys die too. It's just, <laughs> it's a comedy of errors. But uh, it has been a fantastic game. Uh, I have been playing it on the Switch as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you're playing it on the Switch too, uh, Rain. Uh, I'm doing PlayStation, but yeah. Perfect. It's been really. It's been super fun. Just really, really brutal. Because uh, when I was talking with Rain, uh, I had like outpaced him a little bit. And then he comes back, he's like, I just lost my entire level 12 group on level 9, and here I am, oh, like, no. on level 9, with level 10 characters going, I'm in danger! Uh, and immediately <laughs> left the dungeon, because I'm like, I've level only been seeing... Level 9 was fine. Level it... 9 was fine for me until I hit a pack of, like, literally six spirits, <laughs> like, five fucking wyverns, and, like three ogre lords or something or, or no it was priests it was priests the the high priest or whatever <laughs> that's and like, terrifying that pack, and literally i survived one round by the skin of my teeth <laughs> uh thinking that i was going to kill more of those spirits because this is the first time i saw spirits i'd never seen a spirit before so i didn't know what they did but i targeted them just in case because like none of the undead are good to fight in this mm -hmm. game they all fuck you in some horrible way mm -hmm. in six of them that's a lot so I had my two, my bishop and my priest do the dispel undead. One round did not dispel a single fucking one of them. <laughs> round two, I'm like, oh, okay. I got hit by two fucking uh, Mahalitos for 30 damage to my entire team, respectively, <laughs> each time. Uh, I'm like, that's not good. I don't want that happening any fucking more. Uh, we're going to go run it back. We're going to have him dispel the undead again. Uh that time, though, they also did not dispel a single one of the undead, and every single one of them cast it and just, like, obliterated <sighs> me. It was fucking wild. <laughs> That's awful. I've never seen a pack that bad, but... I, no. Anything that has multiple AoEs and multiple groups, like priests and uh, spirits... Life Yeah, F that. F fucking that. Fucking life stealers <laughs> are nasty. Jesus. But now I want to play Wizardry 8. Now I'm like, hell yeah, give me some more wizardry, just inject it into my veins. We should just make an Arctis wizardry, fuck it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got I've got the 3D modules, let's go. Everybody dies to the first pack, alright, we're re-rolling, gotta save your previous party. <laughs> this is... Alright, everybody. Lock in. Let's uh, do a quick recap of just what the hell we did last session, and how did we get here? Previously, 
and Arctis ascended. Rascal's Reef is momentarily saved, and even though eels are still wriggling about in Kozlo's dead stomach, you have learned quite a bit about the secrets of Rascal's Reef, including the fact that Rascal, Kozlo's dad, has traded his lovely wife and mother of Kozlo's many siblings to Nerys, who lived in the abyss under the great sea that spanned between Arctis and the southern continent. Now this trade came with certain perks, including keeping Rascal's Reef intact and not sunk to the bottom of the ocean from Nerys and her minions. But also, <clears throat> it seemed like the goblins were getting a little something-something on the side and trading boons for, or excuse me, trading who knows what for various boons that allowed them to have gills, shark-like teeth, and other aquatic features from the underwater lich. Now, your main reason why you went to Rascal's Reef was to save Rain's friends who were traveling overseas back home, but were accosted by the lich and her minions. But under Rain's gears, <clears throat> a deep one had brought back Rain's friends to Rascal's Reef in trade, but also left with a kraken that was bent on destroying the reef. Now, stopped by, <coughs> excuse me, stopped by the group, Rascal's Reef was saved, and Rascal was very thankful, and offered Kozlo and his friends access to his cash. Flush with gold from his various dark trades he's done on his ramshackle island, he offered them whatever they could take and whatever that would help them on their trip in order to destroy Nerys. Taking a few things and leaving a few things behind, you left Rascal's Reef uh, a little bit wiser to the situation. There were some of the Greenfinger clan that Kozlo seemed like he still tolerated, and even though Rascal might be, on, be beyond redemption, his mother Rosie wasn't innocent in all this. And who knows what uh, had happened to Rosie while she was in Nerissa's clutches. With the combined intelligence and creativity of the artificers and a powerful magic user aboard the Audacity, you devised a plan to counter the crushing depths that the waters of the Abyss uh, protected Nerissa's lair naturally from outside forces, only allowing certain creatures and a penchant for the undead to filter in. Using the power that was radiating off of your crystal that powered your airship, the artificers devised a massive Otleux resilient sphere to surround the ship, and using its power, plunge it into the ocean, hopefully surviving the crushing pressure of the depths as you worked your way down to the abyss. Luckily, Wang Doodle spent a whole episode doing that and ensured your ship would not crack underneath the pressure. Finally prepared, <laughs> after a brief foray to Maginox to speak with some of the spiritual leaders about uh, Grabella's recent strange dreams, they give you a little bit of information about Nerys and the depths, and the, the terrors of Narcissa. And if Nerys did in fact sit upon some sort of wound between the ethereal realm and the material, then who knows what she was doing with these fractured and tormented souls that may be flowing out of the ethereal into the material plane. And one of your bar's protectors, the uh, specter er Eleanor Orosite, offered her services as to seal the wound with her spiritual essence and to prevent any other souls from being fished up by Nerys. And so, with a new bound blade in hand, you all returned to the audacity and began your descent into the abyss. The crushing darkness of the water was oppressive, and although the shield creaked and groaned under the pressure, it held strong. A bevy of 
Strange, undead minions cobbled together by parts and pieces of dangerous creatures underwater lurked around the chasm that led to the abyss. Desperately, they tried to hammer their way into the ship, but to no avail. Nothing was coming out of the ship and nothing was getting in. But your little bubble was waylaid by a potentially more dangerous opponent. A coral drake had slithered out, a guardian of the chasm. And you presented Narcissa's skull as proof or perhaps an offering for the lich. And easily fool, the coral drake let you in. The ship descended even further until it came face to face with a set of massive purple doors inscribed with various tentacles. And it opened its way for your uh, massive airship into a pocket where it could sit normally without the crushing pressure bearing down upon it. You all left the audacity and made your way into Nerissa's lair, hearkened by another massive set of tentacle-laden purple double doors, and you found yourselves plunged into complete darkness. The sounds, uh, excuse me, as you have potions of water breathing on you, uh, you are currently still underwater, and though the pressure of the abyss is still strong, you are not taking any damage from it, though it is uncomfortable at best. The area is almost pitch black, with some glowing uh, bits of seaweed and underwater fungi to mark your way. But aside from that, you can hear and move normally, although you can also move vertically now that you are underwater. And the sound of Sahagin are coming from the room to the east. Let us return back to the Abyss Clutch, the lair of the underwater lich, Nerys Flowborn. One moment, please. moment, I will remove c swab off of this. He promised he'll be- he'll be right behind you. Right- right behind you. As you all swim forward past the double doors that, uh, mark the entrance to Nerissa's lair, you find it blissfully unlocked. As if anything could survive its way down here, surely it wouldn't be foolish enough to just walk inside. There's water from floor to ceiling, and the only air pockets that you can see occasionally bubble up from the coral and barnacles that are stuck on the wall. In front of you, about 40 feet or so, a brightly colored octopus is making its way through the various coral and barnacles, looking for, perhaps, food or a home. At the very northern, northern part of the room, a strange statue sits. It reminds you of a frog, but has large, almost mammalian ears and tiny um, wing-like fins on its lower back. Now, for those of you with a dark vision that I can actually see across the room, uh, you can make me a arcana or history check to see if you can deduce the nature of this strange stone statue. I'll actually also allow religion, if anyone is proficient in religion. I have a slightly smart point instead of just So you said arcana was okay? Yeah, I'd say Arcana, uh, history for you would be with advantage, uh, or religion.
Okay, everybody chose Arcana, so I'll give you the arcane answer. Uh, this stone creature is an effigy of a perhaps long-forgotten god of uh, the frog people, the, the Quayotl. This, at one point, may have been a lair for the Quayotl, but due to the amount of uh, lack of care upon this effigy, this lair has been repurposed for other, uh, more nefarious purposes. Uh, especially for Rain, uh, you would know this frog-like being's name as a, a, a Yan An Ed. Oh yeah, it's that guy. Uh, Wang Doodle might be refracting as he might recognize that name from another campaign. <laughs> Let's not bring him into this, all right? He's just a boy. <laughs> Sorry, was Wang Doodle actually in the other campaign? Like, I've never actually known the answer to this. Or is Wang Doodle new just for Wang Doodle game? is Wang Doodle's just for yeah, just for this. He was a different oh, character. Okay. He was a okay, a Monty yeah, in uh, reflection. Monty never forgot. You hear the sounds, a struggled, aquan cry, cries of pain, and low, gurgling sounds, perhaps Sahagan laughter coming from the east. Uh, where the octopus is kind of dallying around to the north, uh, you do see a large, very similar set of purple double doors going to the west. Is anybody hoping to take a stealthy route through this place? I feel like we're expected. Kazo looks at his bombs. <laughs> yeah, stealthy, you're right! I can try to sneak, but I'm pretty big. Oh, no, 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 to be clear, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting that we should sneak. I was asking before I messed anybody's plans of sneaking around up. Nah, here, I'll peek around this corner, though. All right, Rain is going to cast Crown of Stars on herself. Grabella, you take a peek while Rain is busy quietly chanting to herself. As you look around the corner and get a better look at what's going on in the east. I'm going to focus the camera on you real quick. There are many Sahagan in this room, and it appears to be a large kelp forest. In fact, the kelp is so dense it is hard to see across the room. These glowing clams that the Sahagan are currently hovering over appear to be containers, and you see as you watch humanoid shapes are trapped inside the clam. The Sahagan, with a long and thin poker, stabs inside the clam to whatever humanoid is trapped within, eliciting various screams of pain. You hear their tortured cries, and many more echo within. What do you do, Grabella? Are you muted, Grabella? Sorry, yes. Um... i probably step back and let them know what I've seen. More than uh, anything. Also, there was one creature that you hadn't seen in the very back of the room. Inside, you did manage to peek at you saw a Sahagan, you saw at least a sea knoll, and you saw another larger creature. It almost looked like a toad with spiky red skin, and it was much more burly and uh, larger built than the others. Uh, 
I will relay this to the best of my ability. Here's a frog guy and some other stuff. I don't know, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> So, uh, our mission parameters then are rescue any hostages that we can, kill um, all the assholes. Murder, probably, enemies. I don't. Yeah. Just a reminder for everyone: we do. Uh, Rain did take the time to cast the telepathic bond when we came down, so we have that up too. All right. All right. Uh, Ray, I'm gonna pause it real quick as you are also peering around the corner. Keep in mind your crown of stars does shed bright light in a 30 foot radius. That, uh, <laughs> yes, that is intended. Yeah. <clears throat> Rain, as you peer around the corner, you too see the Sahagan torturing something that is caught within the clam. As well as further on in the room, you see a sea knoll uh, currently holding, or excuse me, watching as a goblin is chained down above a geothermic vent and being boiled alive. Further on into the room, uh, a creature I'm not even sure you've seen before, Rain, make me an arcana check to see if you can identify what it is. Boo! Rain, further on in the room, you see something called a Hezro. With a large, toad-like body, this massive creature is covered with spines and a knotty red skin that looks as tough as a shark's. Now, this thing is not of this world. You know this in your studies to be of a demonic nature. These things are minions, powerful minions, who tend to do the grunt work for their demonic masters. But this confirms something. The Norris might be in league with demons. Oh, I'm so shocked. She's in <laughs> league with demons. <laughs> the demons. Uh, also demons. with an, With an arcana check, Rain, um... But with an arcana check that high, uh, I will give you one little tip about the Hezros. These things tend to stink. They smell of fish, sulfur, and brimstone, a stench from the Nine Hells. And it causes things around them to become sickened. You can usually smell these things coming before you can see them, but thankfully, it might be slightly stifled underwater. Um, so there are people being tortured in there. I do kind of feel like maybe that's our cue. Yeah? Yeah, all right. Um, just a minute, Grabella. Yep. Uh, Eco is going to poke his head out, and he's just gonna, like, the little tip of his little bat tug is gonna like lick the side of your neck and he is going to cast protection from good and evil on you well rain will cast it on you but through eco because yeah. familiars yeah alrighty here goes nothing just in case there's anything that wants to dominate your mind yeah usually I don't know. The Sahagan that was poking at something in the clam looks up as the bright light from rain once again flashes upon them. And they look up and see Grabella illuminated by rain standing behind her, her crown of stars flying above her head. The Sahagan points at the group and alerts. The rest of the Sahagan turn. Uh, Grabella... Would you <clears throat> care to say something inspiring before I put you all in combat? Let's get him, guys! 
<laughs> it's not, well a, done. It's not at all. It's time for murder. Time <laughs> for murder. It's it's clobbering time, but it's murdering time. It's clobbering yeah. time. Uh, I'm gonna need everybody to roll initiative for me. Well, we were invited. You're uninvited. Uh, there are a few things I need to add to this initiative list. So give me just a second. My God. Let's let's fucking get him, guys. Yeah. Just remember, if you don't formally declare war, it can't be a war crime. <laughs> <laughs> You're never. And it's just being a dick. <laughs> I'm gonna remove just... uh, some of these combatants here. No, no, this no. Wangdoodle has it right. That's, that's officially in the Maginox Book of Diplomacy. Oh, nice. And no war, no war crime. Easy. Yeah, I mean, it's in the name. It can't be a war crime without war. Otherwise, it's just a crime. Or as I like to put it, sudden tactical architectural redesign. <laughs> That's what Kozla is about to do to this room. Uh, <laughs> Grabella, as you peer into the room to the east, you do see the kelp forest as well as a bevy of combatants. The Sahagan uh, does see you and sees rain and alerts the rest of the room to your presence. And you can now see the massive form of the Hezro as he turns and points a big gnarled finger in your direction. Kill them, he says in garbled common. Bring me their heads. Uh, Grabella, you're up. All right. Um... I'm going to move right up to this one. Yay! There's a Sahagan holding a small trident, small enough to fit in the gap of this clam where he is busy torturing a Quiatl sea priest. I am just for fun. Uh, rain, words, stuff. It's my rage. Rage is bonus action, correct? It is. Okay. There it is. My goodness. My brain. Just gonna rage right directly in his face. Because why not? And then, uh, we gonna start hitting on the face with the stuff. All right, Grabella getting to work with the long sword. You swing at the Sahagan and hit. He cannot bring his trident up fast enough to parry your blow. Oh, my God. A little bit of fire on there as well. Your sword sinks into the shoulder of the Sahagan and then bursts into a puff of superheated steam underneath the water. The Sahagan screeches and it echoes throughout the cavern. He still lives, however, hanging on by a thread. Uh, then we do it again. That'll hit. <laughs> Pulling out the sword ends the life of the Sahagan, and he begins to float in a big red mist in the water. Yeah, all right. We're doing the stuff! Uh, and that will end Gorilla's turn. Just gonna stay put. You gonna stay where you are? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe set this person free if that's applicable. Uh, you have used your action in a bonus action. You will have to wait till next turn in order to okay. pry open the clam. That's what I figured. Okay, cool. Wangdoodle, you're up. Ah, okay. 
Um, the boiling sea goblin, I'm guessing, is not really in a state to do much, right? Uh, he is currently restrained and stunned. Ah, good. So maybe he doesn't need to make a constitution check. Um, <laughs> the prisoner, you mean? Literally the yeah, prisoner? Yeah, the prisoner. The prisoner, yeah. So we're going to, you know, we're going to do everyone's everyone's favorite gauntlet trick. Uh, we are focusing on the on the trapped prisoner here. Oh yeah, he fails that. Perfect. We're just going to pull him out of harm's way. Drop him back over here with us. Very <coughs> the room. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Same, same, same. Uh, the guy uh, has trained us. Is currently free of his chains uh, and is no longer restrained, but is currently swaying from, uh, well, being heavily tortured. He is no longer restrained. Ah, good. Slight moment of freedom. Okay. Let's see what I can learn about this here, uh, this, this, this here lovely, uh, fish fella? I don't, I don't know what I'll talk about, how I'd address that. Uh, what would you like to know? Um, any, does he have a resistance I should, I should be aware of? Uh, he does not. You know, I think, um, I really wonder what lightning would be like down here, but, oh, let's see, let's have some fun. Let's see what happens. Um, <laughs> don't mind me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to put, the, yeah, there we go. All right, that's about it. And then I think I would just sit tight here for now. Okay. Yeah. Next up, the angered demon in the room. Busy torturing one of his merfolk, he seems quite upset and moves very quickly towards the group, lumbering on the ground in a series of half hops. He almost threatens to trample the Sahagan in front of him. As he's roaring, you can sense even the Sahagan recoil from his noxious stench. Uh, he will... Do, do, do. He's actually going to double move. Brum, 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 brum. Put these ones into the clams. Nerys will be happy with the soul pearls they make. No, not the clams. Give them the clams! Uh, a C-Knoll in the back will also double move. He's going to go about 60 feet. Let me zoom out here. And we'll pass. <clears throat> the Sahagan that has almost been trampled to death by the Hezro will move in front of him at his command. You! Get them! Restrain them! Uh, the Sahagan reaches for a net. But finds none. Uh, and instead, let's see. He will take his spear and throw it at Wangdoodle. The spear goes wide. That stayed on 20 for a bit too long. <laughs> it, did, it did. It did. I saw that. I was like, hmm. Hmm. But now, without a weapon, he opens his claws. Saw how again in the back, he too will mobilize and double move. It's a hog and baron. Guess what he's gonna do? Oh, actually, I need to double check his move. Uh, he has a much faster swim speed. 
Uh, he is going to swim. The Baron, however, with his many arms. Let's get a good picture of this guy. Trident in hand. Swims across the water quick as a blink, even overtaking the Hezro. He swims over his head and lands face to face with rain. A bright thing like a lure. A pretty little thing. And he squints at and can't get a really good look on. Uh, this will be made with disadvantage against rain. He swings the trident and goes wide. He will swing again. And again, missing. The trident moving quickly through the water. But rain is very difficult to hit. Oh no, not the clams. Anything but the clams. Give him the clams. Just out of range of Wangdoodle, the Seenol sees if he has reach. Uh, he has a trident. He's gonna throw it. He's gonna throw his vicious trident at Wangdoodle. Oh no! Uh, that'll hit Wangdoodle. Do you want to use a reaction? I do. I don't know if it's actually going to be. I no, it's just not going to be useful. <laughs> I'm gonna have to just eat the. Are you gonna eat it? All right, Wang Doodle, you take four piercing damage as the Trident does a glancing blow and lands somewhere in the back. Cling, 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 cling. Okay, that was a little bit rude. A little bit rude. <sighs> the sea knoll is similarly stitched together like the other knolls you saw at Rascal's Reef. The Sahagan quickly moved forward, logging the hallway. And recoiling at the Hezro's obvious stench he is leaving through the water. <laughs> Kozlo, you're up. I like to start. Um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Classic Kozlo <laughs> moment. <laughs> Uh, okay. I will... Here, I'll do this. I'm going to start by... Stepping back a little bit. I'm, I'm not in its reach, right? I can step back a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start by checking the old Coslo... Firebolt special at this guy. That'll hit. All right. Kozlo, your superheated firebolt leaves a very pleasant little trail of boiling water in its wake as opposed to the smoke trail it normally leaves, but seems to do sufficient damage against the Baron. Okay, so fire spells work. That was what I needed to know. <laughs> uh, in which case, I will also... Hmm, it seems like he's not vulnerable to fire damage. That is correct. I'm trying to decide if I should use fire cannon or like AOE fire cannon or single target uh, other cannon. I guess I'll pull out uh, the flamethrower for now. The boiling um, water steam thrower. 
Mm -hmm. It does the job. It's fire damage. Um, but I have to use my bonus action to summon it, and I also have to use my bonus action to command it, so that is the end of my turn. Very good. Rain, you're up. Uh, you currently have Crown of Stars on, which is illuminating the room in a 60-foot radius. Trying to, trying to weigh my options, that's all. Just trying to see if I can get more than five targets with a lightning bolt, because I did load lightning bolt for a rare special occasion. <laughs> but if we're only going to get five targets, then we're just going to steal one strike instead. How dare you? How dare you put them in this small but uh, serviceable choke point? How dare? How dare indeed? Uh, actually, let me just uh, measure that out real quick. The steel and strike is smaller. 30 feet. Okay. I guess we just get these guys all right here then. This hog and baron breathes, or breathes water down your neck. That's weird. Oh. Could you not do that, please? It's very uncomfortable. Uh, okay. Steel wind strike. Oh, what? Oh, no! No, that's not how it's supposed to work. It's what? supposed to make a melee spell attack against each target. It only made one. Ooh. It rolled a one. That's not. Yeah, make a melee spell attack against each target. Okay. We'll say the one on the Sahagan Baron definitely misses. Okay, that's that's fair. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll just roll a. Or, uh, let's see if we can do maybe this real quick. What if I do? You can do them individually and cast a spell without a spell slot, or you can roll it manually. Yeah, I was just trying to see if I could, like, untarget one person from... There we go. Yeah, maybe I can. It's I believe it's there shifty. Yeah. All right, so this will be for the C knoll. Okay. Uh -huh. So that hits the C knoll. Oh, I guess I should just do these individually, actually, because it's yeah, because you'll have to do damage. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to just sort of re-roll that real quick and just do damage individually? Uh, we'll we'll just roll? do damage normally for the first two, and but uh, try to do it one at a time for the last three. Uh. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll just do that. He takes, Seagnol takes 23. Okay. That'll hit. That's a hug and immediately dies. Ooh. That'll hit. Very low, but it hits. And again, in a cloud of red mist. The Hezro swipes away Sahagan parts as rain teleports to and fro. Uh, that'll hit as well. As he's swiping Ooh, away that's... at the water. Well, that's a big one. Uh, you catch his hands swiping away at the floating Sahagan parts you have left behind, leaving a massive gash in his arm. All right. Uh, rain, as you Ooh, get man. momentarily close to the Hezro, uh, also, I do think you need to do damage for the first Sahagan Baron that you hit. I, we, we're saying we did not hit the Sahagan Baron. Remember, that was the one. Oh, that's, that is correct. Sorry about that. 
Yeah. It was the sea knoll that should have taken that damage. How much was it? Uh, sea knoll took 23. I just double check that he took it. Okay, he took it. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, Rain, you notice as you get close to that Hezro that stench the Sahagan were turning up their noses about, um, any creature that starts its turn within 10 feet of the Hezro must succeed on a DC 14 con save or be poisoned until the start of your next turn. Hmm, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, and then, so yeah, Rain just like blips between each of these different targets slashing with her sword and then pops right back in front of uh, Zibaran. Ha ha! He looks around as you disappear momentarily and then back at you as if you never left, oblivious to the Sahagan carnage behind him. Uh, and then we'll activate her blade song and I guess we'll insight check the Hezro. Okay, let's see it. Nope. Ooh, no. That's a, that's a Cosmo roll. Rain. Maintaining Woo! the brand. Shaking that hand. <laughs> that's it. That's Rain's turn. Uh, next up, a Sahagan in the room comes swimming down. Uh, he will double move just to get behind the Grabella with Trident raised. Another Sahagan, too, will get in front of Grabella in an, adv in an advantageous position with Trident at bear. Grabella, you're up. You're being flanked by two Sahagan. Are you muted, Grabella? Grabelli, Grabella, Grabella, you're Apparently. muted. Apparently. Hello. I said, oh, that's cute. <laughs> you hit the Sahagan. Immediately, a single strike to the weak Sahagan through the heart causes him to go limp on your sword. And the other Sahagan does not look as confident as he did two seconds ago. How you doing, buddy? You hear a voice in the back of your head, Grabella. Don't forget your radiant damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm trying not to forget that this time because it's useless to get that one. <laughs> All right. And I, like I do appreciate this reminder as... because I can't ever fucking remember to save my life. But it works in character too. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, what? A one d six? I don't think it's that simple. I think it's like half your level or something. Yeah, it's in your. It's at the very bottom of your. Um, Let's see, where is it? Da, da, da. What's it called again? Um, Asriel Shrugs. Say Asriel Or is it Rug? Divine Fury? Yes. yes. It's Divine Fury. It's under your Barbarian features. 1d6 plus half your Barbarian level. So, 1d6? 1d6 plus 6. Copy past to this, so I can just jam it in over and You might be able to click Divine Fury and uh, it might have a damage component. 11 damage, all right. As you stick your sword in the Sahagan, it looks down at the non-grievous wound and smiles back up at you with shark-like teeth. And then you call on Azrael's Radiance to do another 11 points of damage to it. And suddenly, he is missed. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, I'm gonna use my bonus action to let the free sky here go. Try to stay out of the way. I don't know. Probably that front corner over there. Yeah. Uh, this the Quiotl is stunned, and he may not be conscious enough to move out of the way. He's also currently restrained. Grabella, make me an athletics check to open the clam. Um, 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 um. Uh, 
This is a strength check, and you're raging, so you can make that with advantage. Uh, oh, you did make it with advantage. Good. A 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You grab the edges of the clam, and with your rage, ah! pull it open, and the clam splits apart, and a blue radiance suddenly flows over you. Uh, Grabella, make me an arcana check real quick with disadvantage, and the Quiotl Sea Priest gently floats out of the clam, no longer restrained, but still stunned. Yeah, uh, that's, that's special. Yeah, blue stuff. It didn't kill you, so it must be fine. But the Quiotl, uh does not hear you. His eyes are closed, and he hangs limply, floating over the clam. Uh, can I move him, or is that going to re require another action? Uh, you can grab him, and since he is <coughs> floating, um, you can move him with you. Yeah, I'd want to put him, like, right here. Okay. I won't even require then... a check for that. You just kind of float him over to the corner. And then Grabella's gonna go over here. Hey, you <laughs> guys are next. And that'll win my turn. <laughs> Wangdoodle, you're up. Uh, a massive Sahagan Baron is currently up in your business. Well, um, that's, uh, that's great. Okay. Um, hmm. I think it's time for friends. And I'm just trying to find the, uh, just trying to find the butt. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have, we're going to have our friends join us. Um, going to have flamethrower there and then force ballista will be up there there we go all right this is looking great already so um, many ballistas so little time it's so many yeah we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and have these turn on and i'm gonna try to not get absolutely slapped moving away from this baron oh yeah because he's absolutely gonna try and slap you I'll move you back real quick as uh, he tries to make an attack of opportunity. Wang Doodle, do you have all your hit points? No. <clears throat> and he has advantage on melee attack rolls against any creature that doesn't have all of his hit points. As he smells blood in the water, his claw attack will be made with advantage. Wangdoodle, you do get a little bit slapped. Do you want to use reaction? I, I can't. I, I do want to, but it would be pointless. Very well. Your uh, thick ass tail, as we have discussed, gets slapped by the Sahagan's claws. Uh, Wang Doodle, you take 15 points of damage as you move away, but now you can move wherever you like. That was that was just, what? Why? Uh, let's see. Let's try to get some info on this Baron who is just being just the 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 rudest. <coughs> no, must be something in the water. Ah, all right, cool. Big fishy. Not dealing with them anymore. Uh. We're going to activate the cannons, and then I'm just going to sit tight for a second and let them do the work for me. Uh, where's the flamethrower going? Come on, I can do this. Can you yes. hit, can you hit both of them? <laughs> okay. We do a little heckin' blasting. 20! Uh, the Baron completely fails. The Sea Knoll succeeds throwing himself against the ceiling of the small corridor he's in. Uh, the Sea Knoll takes half damage, but the Sahagan takes the full 20. Ah, good. Alright, so that means that this is going to hurt uh, the Sahagan slightly less. Oh, <laughs> Force Blast, okay. That'll hit. 
a wave of force pushes through the cavern. Do you want to push him back five feet? I would very much like that, and I don't know if that will do anything for rain, but... The Baron gets shunted backwards, throwing his many arms up in defense as he tries to block the powerful uh, tidal wave that poor Wangdoodle has just shot out of his cannon, but he can't help but be scuttled back about five feet. He looks at the Hezro now on the edge of his stench and makes a face. <sighs> Alright, and we're just going to get some shuffling of the cannons to help create a front line. And that'll be it for Wingdoodle. Alright, you have uh, sufficiently made a Cavalry of Cannons. Uh, <laughs> the Hesro might be blocked here. He can move through his friends, but there's actually not a big enough space for him to move into, especially through the flamethrowers. Uh, he's gonna think about where he's gonna go. He pushes the Baron in the back, trying to shove him forward who only gets pressed up against the front end of the flamethrower. The Baron looks frustrated at this as it singes a nice circular mark into his bare stomach. Get them! Uh, he actually cannot get through here. Um, Amazing. You'll have to pass. Uh, the sea knoll, however, will take advantage of this. He will move through his friend. He will be forced to also double move. The Sahagin, currently in the back. Boy, these guys are probably going to all be taking double moves here. <laughs> Everybody saw what Grabella did to their buddies and they're just like, Nah. Like, no? Are you kidding me? Does Grabella get an attack opportunity, actually, on the Sahagwin? I probably he, She have. does, yes. Yeah. I, I didn't even see Grabella back there. Grabella. Yeah, I was right up on him. And take a him. swing at this fish boy. Ugh. Buttons. Uh, Grabella, I don't think you have a target. Oh. What? Weird. T, T to target the Sahag in here. There you go. Grabella schwangin'. That'll hit. Oh, if you kill him as he's going towards the party. Oh! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pretty close. Pretty close. Uh, he gets superheated, blasted forward, uh, much to his chagrin. And he ends up swimming up next to Wangdoodle. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, with the Hezro stuck behind the Baron and the Sea Knoll, both are forced to make a save at the start of their turn. The Sahagin Baron absolutely succeeds and is not poisoned. However, he has to look down at this flamethrower. Uh, Remember when they thought this was their chunk point? <laughs> now he's stuck in between the stinky Hezro and a bunch of flamethrowers. Uh, okay, I'm looking at the hit points of your flamethrowers. How many hit points do your flamethrowers have? Uh, Wang Doodle? Uh, it says 70, but I'm not entirely sure that's accurate. I'm not sure that's correct. Can you look at your artificer list and let me know how many hit points they've got? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Because he's about to do a heckin' smash. No, that's probably right. Number of hit points equal to five times your artificer level. Oh. Yeah, no, that'd be right. And an AC of 18. Damn. 
Is that He's actually right? Wow. Bastard. Okay, I actually have been keeping Holy up on shit. that. All right. He's gonna try and smash the flamethrower twice. Bringing his trident to bear. The most as beefy as me. <laughs> he is not flanking, so he's gonna have to do it normally. Ooh, why is this flamethrower so tanky? Ah, uh, he misses with the first attack. Hits with the second one. As he gets a good grip on the trident and brings it down with two hands on top of the flamethrower. I don't think this will actually be enough to even make a dent on this. A oh, small wait. dent. Is that counting? Is that counting their half cover? Are they affected by their own cover? <laughs> well, they're technically overlapping, so if they weren't, they would be affected by the others, right? Well, uh, fair. Uh. <laughs> With a plus two to their cover, that would make that miss. So I'm going to undo that damage. Amazing. The Baron roars in frustration. Ah, beat cannon! Just starts beating the shit out of it with the top of his trident. It's not doing much. Wangdoodle, you really should partake in these fights more often. You're not too bad at it. The sea knoll, starting his turn 10 feet next to the Hezro, fails his con save and begins to retch at the demon's powerful stench underwater. <laughs> he presses forward. Move out of the way. Uh, this guy, he's going to have disadvantage against his upcoming attack on Wangdoodle because he's currently poisoned by the Hezro's foul stench. Uh, I believe that just hits your AC, Wang Doodle, even with disadvantage. With cover? Uh, we will go ahead and shield. Uh, Wang Doodle, does that actually hit with the plus two? For your, um, for your cannons? No, that would miss with the plus two. Uh, yeah, that would. Yeah, that would miss. That would miss? All right. You can gain your spell slot back from your shield. Oh, goody. All right. Thank you, cover. <laughs> Thank you, cover. All right. He is going to try and do it again. Wangdu, I will remove your uh, shield effect. Thank you. Uh, he's going to attack you with disadvantage. He needs to roll a 17 or higher. That'll miss. A 12 is not good enough. Kozlo, you're up. Well, well, well. Um, well, this isn't, if, it, if this isn't just the loveliest little bundling of things. It's a little bit of a cluster. A, yeah, it's a cluster of sorts. There's a fiesta of sorts occurring. <laughs> Perhaps a, a fish, a fish fiesta. As a member of that cluster, Rain gets a little nervous. <laughs> Why is Rain nervous? She's surrounded by three cannons. Because she knows Kozla. <laughs> One cannon. Uh, she doesn't actually know Kozla that well. She knows Kozla enough to be slightly afraid. <laughs> Wing Doodle's cannon can totally handle a little bit of extra fire. It, it's fine. It's got cover. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that so cone's that going that way. Mm -hmm. So that All will right. hit the big guy, the two little guys on the left, and the can. Yeah. All right. Roll damage. See if they save. Uh, 
Uh, Baron fails. Sahagan fails. Sino fails. The flamethrower succeeds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Sahagan Excellent. in the back is immediately incinerated by a blast of boiling water. The Sinol and the Baron also do not fare that well, though they seem much better off in the end. Uh, the Baron has taken significant damage and is bleeding even through the stench cloud of the Hezro. What are you thinking, Kozlo? Oh, I'm thinking that I forgot I sold the rest of my turn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think Kozlo's just going to check another, okay, please stop targeting, there we go, just going to check another firebolt, big guy. Ooh, that'll hit, almost a crit. Uh, one more firebolt is enough to do it as the Baron disintegrates in front of you, leaving behind another wet trail of entrails uh and that should do it all right rain you're up the sea knolls are holding strong their stitched together bodies a little bit hardier than the sahagan around them however the hezro is coming and he is visibly surrounded by waves of aquatic stench. Well, you got these gnolls, right, Wang Doodle? Oh yeah, they're gonna be, uh, yeah, this is fine. I got it. Perfect. Uh, Rain will step, uh, over here to start, so this knoll can take an attack opportunity if he would like. Uh, he will definitely do that. Give me a second. Uh, Rain, you do have all your hit points. I do. Also apparently have cover. Uh, Rain, what's your AC right now? With the, uh, with the, with the plus two cover. It would be 26. <laughs> We're trying. Oh, I mean. Mm -hmm. Hey, if I rolled two 20s, we might have a yeah. chance. Rain, mm -hmm. you can move. OK. Uh, I mean, it's it's sorry. It's 26 asterisk, because if you hit a 26, then it just gets higher. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna grapple the shit out of you, Rain. Hey, good luck. Uh, please don't, though. <laughs> Rain will go up to Mr. Hezro Man. Oh, sorry, actually, sorry. Rain starts here. Mm -hmm. uh, and she is going to. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Haha! -ha. Going to hurl one of her stars from her star crown with uh -oh. a bonus action. All right. 26 will hit. Uh, 19 radiant damage as one of the moats hurls at him. It arcs across the water, leaving once again stardust and boiling water in its wake and slams up against the chest of the Hezro. He looks down at the small smoking crater it has left back up at rain with hate in his eyes oh man the vfx updates with how many moats i have that's incredible actually nice yeah, that's super dope okay so now rain steps up here and we're going to attack this man oh nope sorry i rolled that with an advantage but hit the wrong button that should be normal anyway. It sure does. Uh, hang on. Let me remember how much I need to add for my Blade Song now. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so it's just plus five. Yeah, so it's just plus five. Okay. Attack one, 25. The blade bites deep into the toughened flesh of the demon. 20, it'll hit. And another for 29. Thick slashes cross the stomach of the demon, who now starts to actually look a little bit concerned. I told you, we were invited. Uh, and rain will, hang on, that was what, 5, 10, 15, 20. Rain will come back here with the rest of her movement, so he can take an attack opportunity if he wants. Uh, he Actually, sure I'll, will. Move I'll yourself a little right bit there. closer. Hi, King. Yeah. What's up, buddy? Mao! Mao. So much Mao. A ten will oh, miss. Oh, so close. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Rain goes back here. With the rest of her movement. All right, Rain, does that end your round? Oh, I guess I can insight. Good. Try. Yep, no. that's it. All right. Carry on. Grabella, you're up. Uh, everybody behind me is just victims, right? So. That is correct. All right, we come in to this boy's back. There is no one in front of him, so you are not flanking, but the stench that wafts off this Hezro is nigh unbearable, and you can even smell it while you're underwater. Oh my god! <laughs> she misses. And misses as it catches you unawares. Yeah. Jesus! That, that too, you have trouble seeing with your eyes beginning to sting and that hits really that hits <laughs> the armor so spike attack is, you really oh. like the smell so you had to get close i can add fire to that that's crazy <laughs> He's back. you slam into his back and boiling fire erupts over his flesh uh gorbella the fire seems to fizzle out against the hezro's toughened demon flesh doesn't seem very effective the fire's not very effective back here. Watch me! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I the link Bang Doodle, you're up. A poison senile is busy gagging and retching to the north. He looks quite ill. Okay, um, I, I'm not a huge fan of where, where I am right now. So we're gonna activate the cannons and then uh, this Retchin one, it's just a little Blech. too close to me. I don't like it. Uh, let's, let's do something about it. So we're gonna give him a little bit of shocking grass. Okay. Ooh. Or not. He uh, doubles over, retching as you try and grab for him, and you grab only air. Or, excuse me, water. You know, I really didn't calibrate for doing this in the one. It, it, you know what? That's fine. Maybe he won't notice. And I'm going to try to shimmy myself away. Uh, he will take an attack of opportunity, but it will be with disadvantage because he is poisoned. Uh, seven misses, Wangdoodle. You can move freely. Alright. Good. Good. This is almost how I want it to go. Um, okay. Now, cannons. Uh, Ballista's gonna shimmy down away from the sea knoll. And 
and then we're going to try to take this new angle and push him in a friendlier direction. Hmm. I see. That'll hit. Ah, good. What? The super pressurized water forces the knoll back five feet. As he hits Yay. the floating right. remains of his friend. And now for part two. Wait, what? Oh, oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. That makes perfect sense now. <laughs> okay, nice angle. Getting both the sea knolls. Roll damage, see if they dodge. Not nearly as much this time. They're not particularly dexterous, and the other one uh, is definitely going to have a disadvantage on that because he's poison. Both take the full 11 points of fire damage from your slow and flute-infused flamethrower. Alright, uh, so that, that should keep those guys busy for a while. I'm broken. All right, I'm trying. All right, let me see. Let me see if I can glean any information off this uh, big boy on the stairs. Yeah. No. Nah, okay. <laughs> All right. Everybody's having a classic Coslo insight check. It, it. Look, we're just we're kind of caught up in the heat of the moment. <laughs> uh, that'll be it for me. <laughs> Uh, next up, the Hezro. Uh, he moves up to the flamethrowers. That is literally a wall of flamethrowers. Uh, he's gonna try and grapple one of them. Uh, let's see. Who's flamethrower? This is, is Wang. <laughs> it's legal. Uh, he's gonna try and grapple, uh, Wangdoodle's flamethrower. You can make me an athletics or acrobatics check. Oh, neither of those are gonna be good. Alright, let's see. I have to beat a 12. Oh. No! The flamethrower is grappled. He picks it up by the still steaming end. Uh, and he's gonna... Throw that motherfucker as far as he can. Big dumb frog man picks up a gun, throws gun. <laughs> throws gun! He just wants it out you of know, the way. Like, like there. Maybe, maybe there's good. Oh, sorry, I rolled that as Wang Doodle's flamethrower, my bad. Oh, he is not gonna throw that very far. Uh, he's just gonna turn around and chuck it behind him ten feet. Blah! It goes floating through the water and lands with a delightful plop inside the room. Uh, he moves into position uh, and sees another flamethrower in his way. Blah! As he tries to kick this one over, but he's going to have to wait a turn. As he moves in, one of the gnolls is overcome with his stench and is immediately poisoned. Even the undead can't handle his smell. The sea knoll moves forward to where Wangdoodle is retreating from. Uh, Wangdoodle, you don't have all your hit points? No, I do not. Uh, he's going to have advantage on this. He grabs his trident. Oh, it's actually going to be normal. Hold on. Don't roll that. I got to take that one back. Because he's disadvantaged because of poison, but advantaged because of his blood frenzy. So it's actually just going to be a normal attack. So I'm going to delete that.
and that'll miss. He will swing again. And literally rolling two sevens in a row as Wang Doodle dodges both of the attacks from the sickened sea knoll. Wang Doodle does like a little backflip in the water and <laughs> just taunts him. His other friend, the other sea knoll, now tries to catch you on the way down. And this one is not poisoned. This is with advantage because you don't have all your hit points. Wang Doodle, that'll hit. That'll hit. Two-handed, he comes in and stabs you for 10 damage, trying to catch you as you float back down from dodging the first sea knoll. He's going to take a second swipe. I don't particularly uh, like what you're doing. That's, gonna, that's actually going to miss Wang Dodo because you have plus two to your AC, and he only rolled a 15. Yeah. Off of the force ballista behind you, the barrier catches the trident and makes it go slightly awry. Much to the frustration of the sea knoll. Kozlo, you're up. The Hezro is trying to bully his way into the room, throwing your force ballistas around. Well, that's just very impolite. Um, my flamethrower has the zoomies and it doesn't actually matter because this is about the best place I can move to. That also keeps me in reach of the dude. So flamethrower will just demonstrate its prowess in front of Wang Doodle and the goblin. <laughs> Uh, the two sea knolls, terrible at deck saves, both fail as they are continuously blasted with boiling water. Uh, the poison sea knoll makes it with disadvantage and rolls an 8, uh, and they both take 19 points of fire damage. And they're still alive. They are still alive. These guys have a grip of health. Um, well, I have to decide between two spells. I expected them to die there. <laughs> um, hold on. Start with sure. this. Oh. oh, what would you like to know? <clears throat> I'd like to know if the Seenals are resistant to thunder damage. They are not. All right. So we're going to chuck a shatter. And chuck it right there. Okay. We're going to let everyone within 100 yards know that we're here. <laughs> All right, roll damage, and let's see if these things can resist the shatter. Oh, that's a huge shatter. What? Uh, they both fail terribly and take 26 points of damage as lightning arcs through their cobbled together bodies. They are still standing, even the poisoned one. Why aren't you dead? <laughs> I don't understand this! Explain it more clearly! <laughs> the gnolls with their tridents continue to bear down on your friend Wangdoodle, their undead flesh seemingly impervious. Alright. Well. <laughs> Good luck, Wangdoodle! I'll be over here! <laughs> <laughs> And Kozlo makes the encounter. 
<laughs> Nari slaps hood of C Knoll. You can fit so much HP in these things. <laughs> Kozlo, does that end your round? Yeah. Rain, you're up! The stench might just get to you, Rain. Make me that con save. You succeed. You are immune to the stench of the Hezro for the rest of the encounter. Oh, dang. Well, then. We're going to go here. Flank with our good buddy Flamethrower 1. Or is that Flamethrower 2? I don't know. I can't keep them straight. They're the so large damn ones are Coslos. That's Flamethrower Coslo edition. Okay. <laughs> that didn't help, but thank you. Kazel only has one. Uh, it's the only Wang Doodle that has two flamethrowers. Uh, no, I, I I know that, but there's so many. Oh. <laughs> between the two of them. It's true. Oh, hello. That'll crit. Five. Gotta remember that. Eh, eh, eh. Mid. For a crit. A, a wicked slash to the back continues trying to open up the Hezro, and it is proving to be a difficult opponent to slay. Did I just roll two Did you two twenties? Okay, maybe not so difficult if you're rolling like that, Rain. Rain, you find the weak point of the Hezro, the gills slightly underneath its thick arms, and you stab wickedly into it, finding the demon's heart. With the last couple beats, it looks at you and snarls, and it says, Norris will have you. Rain whispers back, We were invited. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well then. Rain, does that end your uh, round? Well, no, because shucks, he died. So I guess I have, like, uh bonus action or something. Actually, Rain, uh, I'm going to have you hold your thought. I just drank way too much water before the session. BRB, one minute pee. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I will take the opportunity to also pee. Because water level, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, whew, we're good. The old power pee. The old power pisser. All right, Rain, please continue your turn. I believe you have a bonus action uh, and some move left. I believe Rain also went to power pee. Ah, then I will wait till Rain gets back. Was not expecting the back-to-back -back crits, but Seems good. I really thought you were about to say that you weren't expecting the back to back, back to back power piece. <laughs> okay, well, you know, some things you can't you can't anticipate, like drinking a bunch of water before the session. It just clearly doesn't make any sense. I live in a desert. Rain. Oh, back. Hello. Yeah, I'm back. You're back. Hello. We're back. I'm, we're back. Great movie. <laughs> Two sea knolls are all that is left from this kelp forest of torture. Uh, he's not worth a star, so we're just gonna mind sliver him. All right, one of them's poisoned. <laughs> uh, and now he has my minus uh, d4 on his next saving throw. Uh, this guy has a disadvantage and minus four. Uh, he is not going to make any saves. Now is a good time. Uh, that'll be your rain's turn. The sea knoll clutches his head as the mind sliver gets through to whatever is left of his working brain and he lets out a shriek. Grabella, you're up. Uh, the last thing you saw the Hezro do is turn around and chuck Wangdoodle's flamethrower into the room before Rain stuck 
her mana flow directly into his heart. Two senoles are in the room still harassing your friends. What do you do? Um... I'm gonna go around. Let's pretend like that. So I don't hit Wing Beetle. And we will... That one. Uh, that'll miss. You clash with the trident of the sea knoll. Easily parries your blow. Ah, uh, I'm relating. Wait. I think I'm good. My cat is unhelpful. Meow. Me. No, 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 no. Might have to reload it anyway. Okay. Seemed like it was gonna save it, and then it didn't. <laughs> so it'll be Grabella, and then Wang Doodle, and then the Sea Knolls. Hopefully, as the Sea Knolls are currently smelling blood in the water. You can spare Wang Doodle a terrible fate. Surprised they can smell anything else in the water after that Hezru was here. <laughs> yeah, and actually, considering that they are, uh, at least one of them is poisoned, he doesn't want to smell anything for the rest of his life, which will probably <laughs> end in about 30 seconds or so. Thinking about it, thinking about it. There we go. Sorry about that. Good. <clears throat> One scene sways in front of you, uh, occasionally making sickly burping noises as he is currently poisoned. There we go. That's a crit. Grabella, did you roll critical damage on that? I did. All right, excellent. You stab him for 19 points of damage, and the sea knoll still hangs on by a thread. His eyes, the, excuse me, the glow in his eyes beginning to dim. The greenness in his gills apparent. See if we can finish him off. Just barely. You just barely hit, pulling him down onto your spike. He gasps, but he still stands. He twitches slightly on the end of your armor spikes and wants nothing more to be free. No, don't worry, buddy. We're gonna get you. <laughs> That'll end my turn. Wang Doodle, you're up. One of the sea knolls is currently impaled on Grabella's shoulder spike, and the other one has his eyes on you, oh bleeding one. Is this is the not impaled one? The one uh, that is poisoned is impaled. The other one is not. Great. Okay. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and activate the cannons again. Uh, so we're just going to let the force ballista do its thing real quick. And uh, see if we can't make some room. That'll hit. It, yeah, that's not that's not terrible. Twelve force damage. Do you want to push it back five feet? Yes, I do. You push it back five feet into the large double door that is adorned with purple tentacles. The door shakes slightly as the signal is slammed into it, and he looks a little stunned. Alright, flamethrower. Oh, he's back. Don't come around. He, he, he hobbles around, you know. Just <laughs> Don't come around crap. here no more. Uh, 
Where's where is he throwing that flame? You know, it, it's it, just you know, shoot around the corner there. <laughs> just just enough that you know, Grabella get, gets a nice uh, visual. You Woo. know, a nice. Uh, the Fire end workshop. of blue fire. All right, roll damage. It will hit uh, Haslow's cannon. It's it's fine. He targeted my cannon. My cannon was fine. I targeted his cannon. His cannon's fine. There's, you I, know, think, I fine. think my cannon has incorrect hit points, though. So let's see how this Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Ah. yeah. My cannon only had 10 hit points. For some no! <laughs> cannon's alive. Uh, What was the... How, how many hit points does it have? Artificer level? Uh, it is five times my artificer level. I am what level twelve? So sixty. So, yeah. yeah. Let me fix yours real quick. Uh, your flamethrower will have sixty hit points. I'm just gonna fix it in the the main real quick. And that is that for all of your cannons? Yeah. Okay. That is very easy to fix. All right now. So Some good old uh eleven damage. Yes. He did. So I'm going to set Perfect. him at uh, 49. The flamethrower lives. However, the knoll that was poisoned does not. In Grabella, you feel a wash of heat as Wangdoodle angles his flamethrower just perfectly enough to catch the tail end of the dying sea knoll who finally meets his end. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, yeah, much more manageable problem. And, uh, this, you, you know, this is a goblin, probably, uh, probably leave. <laughs> the goblin, uh, tortured beyond consciousness, is still stunned. Wangdoodle, does that end your round? Uh, yes, yes it does. The sea knoll. Hmm. Uh, he will continue going towards the damaged target, which is Wangdoodle. He will finally, in a last act of defiance, raise his trident. He will have advantage on this because you were damaged. Uh, and that will m definitely miss. He's trying to hit a 17. That that will miss, so you can ignore that. Woo! Good. I'm really, really happy with not bleeding anymore. <laughs> the cannons and the cover they're providing are narrowly saving your ass as her uh, as his trident ricochets off the almost unseen barrier they're providing. Kozlo, you're up. Uh. Well. We'll start with a little old flameroo. Little, little blap blap. God, don't hit the boiling sea goblin. He's suffered enough. He's boiled enough. Ah, uh, that'll. What an absolute That'll miss. He kicks the flamethrower off to the side, dodging most of the fire. Okay. Yeah, kick that! <laughs> he stabs his trident into the flamethrower, trying to hold it onto the ground, and looks over as a firebolt is careening towards his head. Let's see that oh, critical. I accidentally, I accidentally added 1d8 to the attack roll instead of the damage roll. Um, but I assume it's still a crit regardless, but... Absolutely. I, I, I hit wrong button. That's fine. Um, Give me that crit damage on that firebolt. There we go. Whoa! Oh, God! Grabella, a firebolt arcs past your head, and so does the head of the sea knoll, as Kozlo lights his neck aflame and neatly severs it off his body. I like to keep organized! <laughs> That was a uh, firebolt that aspired to be a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, almost a 40 damage cantrip. 
Oh, these yeah. people are having trouble being conscious. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what we do about that. There's a lot more of them. Maybe we collect them and put them over here. Or we can get them back to the ship. It's right on the other side of that door. Yeah, probably best if we just plop him on the ship, to be honest. Let's make C Swab bring him over because he's not doing anything else that's useful right now. Yeah, yeah, I went there. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Uh, Gabella will get the priest that she got before. Okay. It'll Bella. start on this end. Go to the door and hand it to C Swab, who's obviously there. <laughs> Did he move and check that stinky pile of crap? I don't really want to, but there's. We gotta see if there's anything on that guy that we need or whatever. Uh, Cosmo, make me a perception check as you step over the remains of the Hezru. No. No. Uh, <laughs> I refuse. Grabella, I you. fail on purpose. <laughs> you tell somebody else to go search the Hezru, and Cosmo just kind of, eh. You take the boiling sea goblin who is still unconscious and pass it to Sea Swab, who makes a uh, place for him on the ship. Yep, make me a perception check, please. Nope. Yeah, no, that looks like a pile of something. Somebody should figure that out. Uh, Grabella, the water is too cloudy to see through. Uh, get this tortured seal free. You want uh, athletics on this? I do, please. Uh, well, then we're just going to let Grabella do all of this if it takes an athletics check. Grabella, you pry open the clam and you free the restrained sea elf. Again, he has been clamped in this clam for who knows how long. His ribs certainly crushed. I hope they can help these people, oh my gosh. Uh, can Rain investigate all of the viscera over here? <clears throat> Since Absolutely. There's just a big pile. Yeah, make me an investigation check, please. Uh, Rain, the two gnolls are carrying a couple vicious tridents, but it is what is near the remains of the Hezro that catch your eye. Uh, a small bit of silver shines through all of the muck, dirt, and debris. One moment, please. He does not have bite or claw. <laughs> ah. You cannot have those. No, I want to take You cannot have bite. them. No. Give me them chompers. <laughs> uh, a bit of silver stands out from the muck. That might be useful. Oh, and here's some money. Uh, can I take these tridents to you from the sea knolls and just make sure the crew is all armed with, with weapons in case, you know, we need to fight our way out of here? Sure. Well, let me put them on the ground here. The vicious tridents, oh. too, are, uh, are magical. There we go. You can just dump them on the ship. TBH. Well, I'll, I'll grab them. throw him at Sea Swab along with all the people he's loading up. Sea Swab is uh, busy making sure the people that you have rescued have safe passage on the ship. What do you all continue to do? Well, I found this key um, the fat guy. Probably useful for something. Either, either one of these two doors. Oh, yeah, there, okay. there was a door over there. Uh, oh, there. Actually, Rain will come up and look at this door. Investigate it. Uh, Rain, make me an investigation check. Rebella, you pry open this merfolk out of the clam. Uh, 
Uh, Rain, you investigate that door. Uh, you feel confident that it's not trapped. The key that you have looks like it may fit a similar purple door to the one in the front of the uh, of the clutch, ornately carved with intertwining tentacles. Gorbella the merfolk safely finds his way back to the ship. There's only one merfolk left, who is currently uh, also in a clam. Kazo will attempt to free this one, but I don't know how well that's going to go. Uh, so you could try to force Ballista the clam open, uh, or you could try and make an athletics like... check if, if, oh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, I, think, I think Kazo will end up looking at this thing and go, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. You can try to make an athletics check to see if you just might be able to pry it open. Uh, but Grabella <laughs> steps forward and just no, no. rips it. No, oh, I'm helping. Kazla. <laughs> he is helping. He is helping. The clam creaks open, once again releasing a shock of blue into the water. Uh, Rain, you're close enough to see it now. Make me an arcana check. There's some sort of resonating magic that is associated with these clams, something that they've been uh, infused with. It might be at least keeping the mer what is keeping these prisoners stunned. Like if we destroyed it, maybe they would not be stunned anymore? Uh, that is correct. Uh, Grabella... You want to smash these clams? Uh, let me float this person back. If there's one thing I know about Grabella is that she loves smashing clams. <laughs> no, my God. <laughs> Charlie Happy wakes Pride, up in a cold sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. Merfolk deliver. Right, Happy Pride Month. Be gay, smash clams. Yes. <laughs> smash clams so hard. Excellent. Athletics, you said? Uh, yeah, make me an athletics check. Uh, Grabella, the, the clam, although it has a very hearty exterior, the inside is squishy, almost gelatinous. But as you pull against the clam meat, it releases more of this blue ether out into the water. Um, and then the clam stops glowing. That was weird. But you already took the merfolk away, so we don't know if it helped them or not. Oh, I didn't realize you wanted me to do it before. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> Good. Although you have a handful have of mysterious giant clam meat. It might be unusable. Uh, over the bond, right? Um, Sea Swab, did one of those merfolk happen to wake up, or do they seem to be recovering at all? Over. Uh, <laughs> you hear, you hear a rock? One of them seems to be waking up. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, yeah, let's smash them all, Gabella. Yeah, all right. Smash every clam! <laughs> smash every clam! Starbuck, stop stealing Nikki's drug. Smash. Smash. You reach into the inside and pull out this magical clam meat. Once again, ripping it free from the mollusk. Give me three more. Oh, I think Wing Doodle has designs on that one. That's, that's going to be him. <laughs> and this, too. I'll just... I'll just... I was just wanting to be more efficient if we just, you know... Oh, do it. Kind of... Go for it. All right. Sure. Let's see what happens. Uh, Wang Doodle puts the uh, muzzle of the horse <laughs> ballista just inside the... Uh, just inside the clam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing terrible could potentially happen here, huh? Wang Doodle, do you fire the horse ballista? Into the clam. Into the clam. <laughs> Oh my god. Happy Pride Month! <laughs> yeah, baby, slam that force ballista into the clam. The 
that Hitachi Force Ballista right into that claim. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Banned. Wait, the Hibachis made these Force Ballistas? <laughs> I make a surprising amount of things. Oh, <laughs> they really do, unfortunately. Wangdoodle, as your force ballista, um, is placed into the clam that Grabella has already smashed. You let rip, and the force of it also blows out a chunk of the magical clam meat, and the clam loses its luster. Grabella and Wangdoodle, you have destroyed all of the clams within this makeshift torture chamber and, and they are now, no just longer because, glowing just because the clam got smashed does not mean it loses its luster okay <laughs> we, va- we value clams more than that around here come on oh my God. the light fades from them whatever foul magics keeping them alive has now dissipated hey it wouldn't be a bad idea to Get a sample and uh, see how it reacts to some things. Uh, Grabella will come over with all the clam meat she has and just give it, shove it in Wang Doodle's arms. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your generous donation. You're welcome. <laughs> evil oh. clam meat. Oh, Wang Doodle, you get a pile of quivering evil clam meat. Why is it perfect. Hard? We're listen. We're better off not at the list. <laughs> quivering in anticipation. I don't know. Oh, my face hurts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Little did Christina expect that using clams as her straight uh, device is did. going to cause this. Hmm. Hmm. Somebody hmm. knew. Just wait till you see the barnacles. Oh no. All right, uh, all that. I... The clam needs now in the rucksack. We're fine. We're walking. We're walking. So right I next think to I the. Can open this door over here if you would all like to go through it. My doodle, do you need a potion or something? Uh, yeah, you know, maybe. I, I, I am, I am kind of leaking a little bit. Uh, do you all the clam need? I don't know if I have one. These juicy, juicy clams. Mmm, clamato! Fucking hell. Yeah, I do not seem to have any. Oh no. Um, I think I have something. Hold on. I have a potion of supreme healing. So. Hopefully. Hopefully, I don't need this later. (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I think you hold on. To, listen, listen. It, these, you know, this is just a, a you know flesh wound. It's this is fine. I'll walk this off. But don't you guys have like small healing spells or anything? No. N- no, just you. <laughs> oh no, I don't really heal. That's not really my thing. No. Oh well, then none of us. Yeah, I think they, uh, he also healed me once, but he he puts goo on things. Yeah, you would want some goop. Uh, Langdoodle <laughs> has armloads of goop right now already. Yeah, unfortunately, healing was not on my spell of the day calendar. Hmm. <laughs> like an advent calendar. It's a new spell every day. I mean, I could goop somebody if someone needs goop. Uh, y- you know, uh. I'm I'm thinking I'm still I'm still okay, you know. Uh, everything's working. Haven't lost any uh, appendages, no explosions yet, sadly. Great, let's Tuzzle, go to the door. Like, pulls a big <laughs> handful of goop out of his bag. Like you sure? You don't want some goop? <laughs> I got plenty of goop. You know, the first three times I thought you were just being polite. Now I can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Sure, why not? I've, I've never been one for, you know, turn down experiment. Uh, I can't actually see why. Oh, are you under a 
<laughs> he's under Spirit. the force ballista. Yeah, he's in the middle to my left. There we go. Yeet the ballistas away. Uh, Rain, if you. <laughs> oh, wait, we're doing. Since you feel like this door is not trapped and the door has a small keyhole for you to put the Abyss Clutch key in, you could potentially peek in this lock to see what's on the other side. Uh, if you'd like to do that, you can hover over the lock and press O. Oh. 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 Uh, I feel like it sort of worked for a second. Oh, oh. Weird, okay. Yeah, I could not. Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of finicky. It's a little finicky. Uh, well, I think there's something definitely over there on the other side, but I have no idea what it is. Uh, there's definitely a room. Rain the zoo. Peek in just very slightly. Um, you think you see another clam, and Grabella may be very excited to rip this one open as well. But there is a oh shadowy figure that walks by as you peek through, uh, peek through the hole, larger than a Sahagin, for sure. Not as big as the Baron, perhaps, but definitely big. So what you're telling me is that Charlindra's clam is over there. That's why <laughs> Huge clam! <laughs> I retire. Uh, yeah, I rain. think there's definitely something like right on the other side of the door, so be ready to murder it, probably. Rain, as you kind of peek through and get a better look at it, uh, it's like a Sahagin, but with the head of a mackerel distinctly more fish-like than the Sahagin and lumbers on a large upper body and with comically small legs. Its gangly arm is carrying uh, another shell in it, but with care and walking across the room. Somebody should get ready to make fish sticks. Everybody should get ready to make fish sticks. Probably, actually. All right, I'm just opening the door now. All right, let's do it. As you open the door and light floods in, everyone can see the form of this fish man with long arms holding the uh, big oyster shell with care. The further on you look into the room, on the right side you see various tools and implements surrounded by pale white orbs that look like large pearls, and on a small board of sorts are smaller pearls of various size, some as big as large marbles and others tiny, like classic pearl-sized. Softball-sized pearls lie scattered across the room, though they do not seem as lustrous as the uh, ones that are sitting on the table. As you look further in, there are more long implements that normally you think you would find in a blacksmith shop. And again, a pile of lustrous pearls sitting on the floor in a corner. These fishmen are working dutifully, carrying these pearls and these shells that they're holding in their hands. But further on into the room, as you open the door and look surprised, uh, you see... Well, the token perhaps is a little bad. A, a kelp-haired woman with deep blue skin, webbed fingers. The kelp covers her body, obscuring uh, most of the naughty bits from sight. But her distinct features, gangly face and drawn... Uh, cheekbones remind you very startlingly of a hag. You, uh, <laughs> you 
And you all remember the glorious blood hag that you went up against. This reminds you of her. This might be a hag of the seas. Next to her, like a dutiful pet, is an eel hound. Dog-like in appearance, on all fours it sits next to the sea hag, and it too turns as you open the door and lets out a annoyed hiss. <laughs> the fishman, uh, currently closest to you, the one holding the shell, uh, takes a couple steps back, startled, almost dropping the shell in his haste. <laughs> Uh, it says some words to you in a language that you do not understand. Oh, hello. We were invited. Uh, panic, the fishman is stumbling backwards, clutching the shell to his chest. Once the sea hag comes into view, um, Rain might see Grabella physically flinched, which is not a thing she does often. What y'all got in here? The hag Lots turns and looks at all of you uh, as the eel hound growls in retaliation. <laughs> not now, my pet. Not now. Greetings. It's been some time since I have seen visitors. Do come in, but put your weapons down, and things shall be kind. Hmm. Don't I think we'll be doing that. I warn you. My Haleshi are very, very hungry, as well as my faithful hound. But perhaps we can all get out of this safe and sound. Hmm. Amen. Think? Amen. Let us speak on witches and things. I see. Uh, no quarrel with you. Christina, what was the name of the hag we met in Aralia, the one that lived in the tree? Looking through notes, I don't have it. Uh, let me see if I... Here, one second. Aralia NPCs. I may have to go back and check the VOD. One second. I may have put her in retirement. Just a second. Double checking. Uh, I may have to go back and uh, reference the VOD because I don't have her on here immediately. It's all good. I just looked at my like quickest like notes. I didn't have her anywhere. It's been a while. I wanted to name drop her here, but I think it's fine. Well, if uh, you want to get out of here, Rain will take one step in. If you'd like to get out of here, why don't you just leave? Ah. Oh, I'm I'm Rain, by the way. Uh, Queen Rain of Maginox. Well, well, well. A visitor and a queen, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you are? I am the curator of the soul pearls. These soul encapsulating devices we cultivate at the bottom of the abyss. Perhaps okay. we can come to some 
mutual agreement. I'm all ears. The sea witch, the soul stitcher Neris, she utilizes these pearls in order to encase the broken and tortured souls that she brings to the clutch. Neris tortures them until they will give her whatever she desires, for a soul cannot be unwillingly torn from the body. And so, the bargains are struck, and the soul is encased in the pearl, forever trapped, furthered by the crushing pressure of the abyss. These soul pearls can only be cultivated here, and hold great power within as the soul's strain come out. Does this not interest you, Queen Rain? Um, interestingly, no, it does not, actually. That is all behavior that we are here to put a stop to, as a matter of fact, as many of the folks I believe you have trapped in these pearls are actually my citizens. Oh. Oh dear. Oh dear but, indeed. But they are so much more useful in this form. These are souls that have been returned, Arctis, on the good grace of your dragon lord. We merely give them purpose. Give them renewed power. Until Neris can find a better use for them. I think that's where your Neris and I will differ pretty substantially in terms of policy. But you are I not here I... to take her place? Hmm. Something of that nature. <laughs> you are in. Far too deep, then, adventurers. I, I assure will give you, you I've seen far... Go ahead. Turn about. Leave this place. Leave Nuris to the cultivation and separation of the soul in the willing vessel. There is a great danger. A great darkness that lurks under the abyss, darker than even the heart of the lich. One should not gaze into it, lest you be lost as well. Consider this warning a kindness. I very much appreciate your warning, and I appreciate that it is freely given. Uh, by, oh, by the way, uh, a, a, et cetera, told me that it is Della. Her name is Della. Ah, uh, thank you. Thanks, et cetera. You're the best. <laughs> thank you, viewers. <laughs> uh, uh, I appreciate your warning, and I appreciate that it is freely given. Uh, you know, I met someone who you remind me of. I don't know. Do you know of Adela? I met her in Auralia once, as a matter of fact. She tilts her head. A name I have not heard of in quite some time. Yes, I am familiar with this wood hag. She finds strength and kindness and helping others. Sussing out secrets when she can. Yes, I know of this one. Well, interestingly enough, we assisted her some time ago with her own great darkness in her neck of the woods. Happily do the same here, if that's something that you are interested in. You would 
pre the abyss and its denizens from the clutches of the Death's Mother. Is that what you are here to accomplish? That's table stakes. That's the minimum that will happen here. I see. I see you are formidable and carry yourself with strength and grace. Surely I do not wish to perish at the hands of another accomplished wizard. I would hate very much to kill you and your friends. You would not be the first hag that I spared, freed and spared, as a matter of fact. Encountered the night hag not too long ago as well in House Hamaki. I have no quarrel with you if you choose to go. The sea hag looks down at her growling eel hound and gives it a pat on the head. Then, I shall take you up on this offer, and perhaps, if you are, successful against the Depths Mother, then perhaps I shall teach you the secret of the Soul Pearls as well. Not to utilize if you are here for other reasons, but how to release them from the crushing pressure. Very well. Well, I think it's safe to come in then, everyone. Yes? Rain steps forward. The uh, fish man, clearly uh, not wanting a quarrel, takes a caution. A cautionary step backwards. Uh, Grabella hesitates by the door. Then let us make a small, meaningful bargain. Queen Rain. Defeat this plague upon the abyss. Nas and Eris. And I shall teach you how to unravel the soul pearls she so desperately craves. I am happy to give you your life freely. Such That's my gift to you. However, I'm not keen. I've never had to make a deal with a hag before, and I would rather not start now as fair fickle with deals, as you understand. <laughs> but how else would we stay honest? She grins with wide, rotted teeth. How oh, indeed. You know, I have a friend. I don't know where he's off to you, but he would have really liked to have met you. What was your name again? I am the Collector. That is all you need to know. Oh, come now. I introduced myself. The least you can do is give me your proper name. <laughs> she grins. Uh, she does not want to give you her true name. I am afraid. Oh. That is personal. You knew my true name. Why? The foul magics you could sling against me. No, no. You may refer to me as the Collector. Perhaps even well. the Pearl Mother. She reaches down and grabs one of these softball-sized pearls. Are you sure I cannot interest you in power? The souls, even though they are fragments trapped within these pearls, Old significant power 
in order to unravel your mind and expand your magical horizons. They are broken anyway, and do not wish to be reunited with their vessel. You do not wish to put them to use? She extends it out to you as if she were handing you a bright apple and smiles as she ushers you to take it. Does it not interest you? Oh, wise one. Oh, queen. Such limitless power held down here in Nerissa's clutches would go so long to rebuilding your... Where did you say you came from? Maginox? Yes would rebuild your city, secure your place as the Eternal Queen. Uh, Rain will kind of like walk up and delicately take the pearl from the sea hag's hands and set it over here on the table where it is safe. I have gotten where I am wielding my own power. I've never needed that of another's. Never needed to subdue them, use them against their will. I don't intend to start now. I think you will find that I am, and my friends, a power enough. Uh, Rain, make me an intimidation check with advantage. Can it be persuasion? Sure. Because I actually gave myself persuasion. Uh, yeah. Thinking, you know, it'd be useful as a fucking queen. Oof. Yeah, it's not bad. Hmm. I am convinced enough that you are powerful. But not convinced enough that you are not least interested in finding out the secrets of these soul pearls. You do lust for knowledge, don't you? Oh, Surely yes, I can I do. give you something in exchange for myself and my friend's life. Oh, benevolent queen. Oh no, like I said, that was given to you freely. But I imagine I'll see you again. Perhaps if you have something tangible, we can discuss. Then I will leave you with one bit of advice. Because you have shown us such kindness. A kindness that must be repaid. Nerisse. <clears throat> Excuse me. Beware of the Depths Mother, for she is in league with powers even beyond her control. She has turned on even her own allies, taking their phylacteries as they are consumed by their own greed. Take not anything from the Abyss that you do not think you can handle, and do not make any bargains with the Depths Mother. Uh, she begins to hobble forward. Ah. We shall... Oh, and... Don't touch the bone crabs. They are one of the few creatures I can withstand the pressure of the depths for an extended period of time. Their pinchers will take a limb, clean off. But they are harvesters of the soul pearls. Release them back into the flow, and they will do you no harm. Come, my hound. Come, Aleshi. We shall leave. The queens to battle. Is 
she steps behind Wang Doodle and kind of leans in close. Wang Doodle, you even smell through the seawater the pungent smell of kelp that has been sitting in the sun for perhaps far too long. And what do you see here, oh inquisitive one? Surely you have a lust for knowledge. Something strikes your fancy? As much as I like your offer, by my contractual obligations, I am not inclined to answer your questions at this time. Please direct all inquiries to uh, my supervisor. Ah. You have trained them well. I say your grasp on your minions is stronger than even Nerys's. Good job. Honestly, I didn't even train that one. He just does that. It's rather <laughs> impressive. <laughs> and what about you? You. I know your blood. A familiar scent. You are from the reef. Hey, what would happen if seen that he has any my ma around here, have you? She takes one of the pearls off the table and hands it to you. Would you care to exchange uh, a bit of information? Uh, a barter for a barter? A boon for a boon? What's your price? He uh, looks at you and over at Wang Doodle and back at Grabella. She uh, frowns and takes the pearl back. No. Even I know better than to barter with a goblin. Your souls are already tainted. Filled with the better. muck from which you came. That's racist. Why are you doing business with you? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Now this one. This one. She looks Grabella up and down. My dear, my dear. You are incomplete. You are searching. A fractured soul. Perhaps even one of these pearls Nereus holds may hold your other half. Or other pieces, depending on what torments have been imposed upon your being. Certainly, you are not curious. Perhaps no, really. I could re reunite you with family, friends, remind you of whatever purpose you are searching for. I can offer you this. Yeah, I'm good. Carmella just like stays at the door, not wanting to like threaten her, but clearly has a hand on her sword. Beware the depths, mother. She seeks out and controls souls like yours. The ones that are damaged. But you have already had atrocities committed against your being. One's far surpassing even what Nerys could conceive of here. Such pain. I feel burning within you. Yep, I do a lot of that. You do not wish to be free of your rage. Mm, serves me pretty well. 
Let it not consume you utterly. You are more volatile than the goblin behind you. Someday it may be the end of your little adventuring party. Keep your rage in check. She moves into the kelp forest, and her eel hound comes bounding behind her, stops to sniff at Grabella's toes, and gives Grabella a long and even growl. <sighs> Come now. Leave her be. She is not to be contained. These can sniff out the broken ones. Decide who is ready for harvesting. Your soul is under great strain. Be careful how far you push yourself. <laughs> Come now. It's time for walkies. Uh, the sea hag and the eel hound uh, leave together, disappearing into the darkness of the abyss. There are still some fishmen in here looking at you uh, with confusion as they have pressed themselves back up against the walls of the sea hag's chamber. Uh, Brain kind of points at like the near one. Do, do you, would you like to go with her? And then points uh, out the door. Uh, 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 you, you're, you're free to go. Go on. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, My God, Azrael would want all both of them. Yeah. <laughs> looks down at the force ballista. Uh, uh, oh, um, just step around it, or or Wang Doodle maybe can you? Give him some space. He's a big boy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Uh, the massive go mackerel begins stomping through the room. Oh. Looks down at Gerbella with worried eyes. Oh. That will hurt you good. You're not the one I was worried about. She takes her hand off of her sword. Oh. The two mackerel men also follow the sea hag and leave. The room is empty, except for the pearls that are uh, rolling about on the counter. You see to the north, there is a small chamber with a shelf. There's a bit of heat coming out of there, presumably some sort of geothermic activity. And there are crabs as the sea hag had mentioned that are made of bone and they sit nestled between the heat of the uh, geothermic rifts and half formed <clears throat> lumpy looking pearls sit around them occasionally they move in between the pearls and rotate them or grasp them in their claws and give them a thorough squeeze or some of them are just rolling them around in the dirt near the geothermic activity. What you got here, Kozlo? Kozlo's just like, as soon as everything is out of the room, like runs over to the chest, like, thank God, finally! <laughs> uh, because it's just sitting there, he's going to check it, like, give it a quick once over check to make sure that the lock mechanism isn't trapped or anything uh Rain give me an in give me an investigation check with advantage please uh the chest is not trapped but it is locked all right Haslow gets to work all right give me a sleight of hand check please I'm going to guidance myself as I do this, too. Uh, 
Ooh, all right, a 19. Oslo. Quickly and efficiently, you put your thieves' tools into the chest and pop the lock. Inside, a bevy of pearls on top of a soft cushion of kelp. Some normal pearls, various sizes, would uh, fetch a fair amount at the market. There are purplish pearls as well in there, each the size of a baseball. Uh, these must be the soul pearls that she was talking about. These lustrous things can encapsulate incomplete souls, just like Grabella's, and potentially repurpose them for future use. In the center of the chest of pearls is one that is faintly glowing with an arcane aura. Do I recognize the aura to it? Uh, make me an arcana check, please. Rain, you can make me one too, since you're also standing near the chest. I'm gonna flash of genius on that arcana check. All right, let's see. <laughs> uh, makes it up next. All right, both of you recognize the central pearl as a pearl of power. Uh, this must be the distilled and. Perhaps one of the final forms these soul pearls can contain, but this pearl can regain your spell slots. While this pearl is on your person, you can use an action to speak its command word and regain an expended spell slot. If it's a fourth level or higher, the new slot is third level. But once you use it, you cannot use it again until next dawn. Uh, Kazla will kind of glance at Rain with like a, you want that? If you don't want it, I want it. Sort of look at his face. Um, no. As long as it's not like somebody's soul or something. Oh, I thought. Seems, seems I thought fine. Uh, th this has oh, probably no, no, been no. created uh, from nefarious means, yes. Well. Oh, you know what? It requires a tune. Do not have any attunement slots available here. Are all of these pearls in here like soul pearls, or like the the result of souls being uh, consumed? Nine of them are just normal pearls. There are five empty soul pearls uh, that do not have anything in them. So they, but they are ready to be filled. The pearl of power is a result of a cultivated soul pearl so it is a the, the, the means to the oh. end okay so it's one that the uh, it has already been used it's a soul pearl that has been used to slurp a soul essentially essentially and that soul's spell power slurping. is being given back to you as spell slots uh okay well in that case Oslo doesn't feel great about the way the sea hag was like, here's a pearl, wait, never mind, and then left. <laughs> uh, when he asked about his mom. So I think Kozlo would probably careful, like, I, I would want to carefully, the ones that are just pearls, I would take because they're, they're shiny. Um, the soul pearls and especially the pearl of power he would want to carefully put away in case it accidentally is his mom or some such okay uh Kozl, you can feel free and um take all of them if you like yeah Kozl fills his bag with balls <laughs> okay happy pride month <laughs> <laughs> Grabella uh -huh. smashing glam, cl smashing clams. Cosmos uh, stuffing balls. himself with balls. All right. Remember, Sorry. don't touch the bone crabs or something. I really want one. <laughs> uh, 
Maybe once we dispose of Nerys, uh, the bone crabs will be looking for new employment or something. Yeah. Did I not pick up the... You did not okay. pick up the power one. I don't see it in there anymore, though. I see a soul pearl going into your thing. Is it a power pearl? Uh, I said it was a, the pearl of power. Why don't I just put it directly in your inventory? Oh, I see it now. It's because it's, it went into my equipment section instead of... Oh, yeah, I see it. Uh, yeah. Instead of just into my inventory. Uh, Rain's gonna investigate this door over here. Alright, make me an investigation check, please. The wolf! Rain, you uh, peer through the door and press your ear up against it to listen. You do not hear the uh, rhythmic gurgling of fishmen behind it. And you're confident this door is not trapped and, be can, and can be opened with the Abyss Clutch Key. Okie dokie. The door opens into a hallway beyond the north. You see another one of those uh, ancient deific frog statues that... Uh, this must have been the home to some chaotal at some point. Uh, Grabella will toss her hand up that she sees something. Grabella, as you move forward and glance around the corner, briefly you see the backside of another fish-like guard. This one is a more familiar figure, with the smaller, almost trout-like heads and more uh, proportional humanoid bodies. The Kuatoa generally serves foul masters. This one, wielding another, excuse me, wielding a trident and standing guard, looks to and fro, searching for any outsiders. Uh, Grabella, make me a perception check real quick. Mom's so good at those. <laughs> Coast Looks clear. like a fish man. <laughs> looks like a fish man. <laughs> looks like a fish man. Here yeah, they see one, but you never know. Everybody ready? Rain will step up next to Grabella. Rain, as you oh. step up next to Grabella, you too see uh, another guard, but he is much closer than the one Grabella probably sees. And he is at the base of the steps next to you. You also see slightly further into the room that there are multiple Kuotoa guards, each guarding a set of stairs. Although this hallway looks like it leads into a much larger chamber. Uh, and that is actually where we are going to stop the session for today. It is mm -hmm. nine o'clock. And we have some more dungeon to explore. We, we won't go too far without our glorious friend Sea Swab. And so hopefully He's just he gonna will. be stumbling around in the dark trying to find his way to us next week. <laughs> right. Ah, where are you guys? There's just clouds of red and awful hanging in the water. I ah, must have gone <laughs> this way. Just go the way there aren't dead things. The way there, yeah, there aren't dead things. He <laughs> makes a bargain with a sea hag on her way out. <laughs> Which way did they go? She's like, ah, yes. For the small, small price of your soul. <laughs> 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 That's true. See, uh, see, so I wasn't there for the, the sea hag business, but I'll have you know, Rain is three for three on non-violent uh, ag Heck. interactions. Well, yeah, I did not get that experience. <laughs> and Grabella's like maybe one for one. She's one She's for not, two now. Okay. Uh, Gr Grabella, you know hags to be schemers, and will definitely do anything to get the upper hand. Uh, the hag had no interest in fighting. Yet. <laughs> My face itches. <laughs> so that is where we will stop for today, as you begin to reach a larger antechamber, guarded by vicious Kuotoa, Pyrena-headed beasts serving Nerys. We will pick this up, <clears throat> excuse me, next Monday, and hopefully have uh, a sea swab with us. 
Hmm. Everybody have fun today? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. We will continue the hunt for uh, Nerese next week. But until then, you guys are free. Thanks for playing with me. And uh, I will see you guys next Monday. Sound good? Sounds good. good. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night. Bye. Good night. All right, everybody. And that is it for Arctis Ascended today. Oh. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching today. I actually greatly appreciate it. You can check out our shorts and our funny moments over on Twitter and TikTok if you want just little, little bite-sized parts of the session. Otherwise, catch our VODs in full over on YouTube at ArctisDD. Catch up on the lore and see just what this evil Nerys wants. And Kozlo still needs to find his mom, who is hidden somewhere within the clutch. I'm your DM, Zarina. And you want to see the Hitachi Force Ballista on TikTok? I will, I will make a note with my editor. At the Hitachi Force Ballista and the clam opening, we'll make it a dirty joke session. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Spencer, hey, hey, hey. Thanks for dropping in from Devo's stream. Nukiyashi, hey. Yumino, thank you for dropping by. 2020, thanks for hanging out, as always. I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you for making chat uh, a happy place to be. It was good. That was great. I love the banter this session. Hopefully we'll get C-Swab back for the next one. And we'll uh, continue pressing on. And just what could be even worse than a lich under seas performing atrocities We'll find out. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>